Well, hello from sunny Norfolk. I've uh, recently been asked if I could do a quick video on the VHF UHF radio installation that I did in my 2023 MG5 EV. Unfortunately, typical me, I did all of the work over the course of probably a fortnight from literally the day I picked the thing up. I started ripping trim off on the inside, as you do. And it took about probably two weeks in total getting the parts and getting all the cables and things through. I didn't take any pictures whatsoever, but uh, I can quite easily describe uh, what I did. So let's have a go. As you can see, I'm using a Kenwood radio with a separate head, GPS and so on and so forth mounted underneath the, uh, the vent and it's screwed up and into the vent where you can't really see the screw hole. The GPS behind it there is mounted with a sticky pad and the cable obviously just disappears down and into the dash. I've then got the speaker and the mic coming through into the centre console there. I have a 20mm hole with a stuffing gland into it and the cables go through that and into underneath the trim, the mic and the speaker. Um, nice BHI speaker that I found it's very loud and very clear can't break that enough nothing special about it but it's very very good those cables then disappear under the carpet reappear under the seat and uh, they come through a piece of heat shrink which isn't shrunk to the uh, door panel I've then got this head cable that disappears into the dash behind that piece of trim goes down and round this door trim. It then joins up with the previous cables in that heat shrink and follows them through behind the door trim all the way through to the back, round and underneath. And I managed to get them through somehow with a, oh, probably two hours of real difficulty. Uh, but I managed to get them through and into the boot via underneath that door pillar or underneath the door frame even, sorry. And then to this part, as you as you bring to here where this seat is, I managed to get them up and through behind the seat. Now, a word of warning there, you can see a yellow cable. As you're pushing cables through from that door, unfortunately, they snag on that. And it's a case of getting your hand down there and moving it out of the way. Then you can pull the cables through. And actually, they didn't go too badly. So from front to back, I have got Cat 6A FFTP cables for the head, the mic, and the speaker. I've got some 6mm twin and earth for the power. The power supply is taken, rightly or wrongly, from the back of what would have originally been the cigarette lighter, uh, which is just the 12 volt power socket now. It took me forever to get my hand in the back of it to pull the connector off break into the wires without actually breaking them and connect through to them. Uh, they're connected via ferrites. There's a ferrite on each side. Um, that then connects to uh, a block, which then goes off to the dash cam. It's fused and then goes off to the dash cam. And also I have got then the radio connection, which is the six mil twin and earth. It goes through and round a ferrite a few times and then disappears into that heat shrink that you've already seen with the other two uh, cables. One for the speaker, which is again, it's a Cat 6A FFTP, even though it doesn't need to be, um, and one for the mic. Anyone that knows the Kenwood 710 knows that if you try and extend the mic cable with any kind of normal LAN cable, unfortunately, as soon as you key the mic, you get real bad clicking. Um, using this screened cable and making sure that it is earth screened, uh, it eliminates all that problem. I haven't done any kind of particular uh, wiring. Um, it's, I can't even tell you what the numbers are, to be fair. It's just a kind of a random, random connection on each end, but it's obviously the same each end. Uh, it's not done to the 563B, is it, or whatever it is for LAN. I haven't done it to that. Uh, but it works perfectly. Anyway, back to the video. So coming then into the boot, I managed to pull the bottom of the boot out. The cable continues round and underneath the um, boot base. 
and continues round and underneath and through this big old piece of trim on the side there and up and through um, all the connections and everything are all done behind that piece of trim there's another ferrite large ferrite on the six mil twin and earth for good measure um, and then the cat 6a fftps unfortunately which are bright orange and by the way it's heat shrunk on the head which is why it looks black you can't see because uh, i couldn't bear an orange cable coming up and out the dash so yeah those two then terminate into the radio behind the radio mount there i have got a big thick screen that goes up to a proper bolt on the side of the vehicle which i think is where the rear headlight cluster takes its earth from um, that then comes round and down i've i've completely encapsulated and screened all three of the cat 6a's all together um, with another piece of the the screen and stuff it's all bolted to the back of the radio mount I've also taken an earth from that same bolt on this side, on the boot side, to the side of the radio, just for good measure. The antenna has then, the antenna cable, I took the right hand rear light cluster out of the car and found that there's a lovely grommet behind it. And I've managed to utilize that grommet to get this coax through. This piece of coax that I found at a rally has got an end type on one end and an SMA on the other, and I've converted from SMA to N-type in the back of the radio. So it comes up and out, and it goes up on the side of the boot lip, another ferrite just for good measure. I'm paranoid about causing interference to the car, you see. There's ferrites everywhere on every cable. Then comes the typical El Cheapo boot lip mount, and all sort of earthed in it's re-earthed at that point to the boot lid just round with that second black wire so it's an n-type connection i cannot specify enough the n-type connection that i'm using there uh, the reason that i've gone for that all of the other antennas that i've ever put in have always been pl259 base and i've never had a very good swr on 77s in fact it's hideous it's almost unusable this particular antenna and the way that I've mounted it, the SWR on 433 is almost one to one. It's fantastic. SWR on two meters around about 145 is pretty much one to one. It just works really, really well. And I think, as I say, it's to do with it being an N type base as opposed to a PL259 base. And there you have it. My installation of the Kenwood 710. If you've got any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. Drop them in comments on here or drop them in a comment on the uh, on the EV forum or wherever I might have posted this. As I say, more than more than happy to try and help. I've gone completely overboard with screening and ferriting, probably. But yeah, as an electrician and someone that knows a little bit about radio, I would rather go that way than either cause interference to the car or receive interference from the car. I was paranoid when I first transmitted that uh, something's going to go hideously wrong with the electronics in the car but thankfully so on it seems fine um i'm very pleased with the installation any comments drop them in thanks and seven three from me kevin m0 ujd b channel zero one four five point six two five